Hello, and welcome to our Serenade video. In this video, we will go over customizing your case processes. Let us log into your case worker portal. Before we begin customizing, let us look at where we select these case processes. On the first page, we will see the case processes drop down menu. When clicked, it will bring up all the case processes the system offers. These were pre-installed when you signed up to the software and include the vast majority of employment-based cases and family-based cases. If you select a case, the software now pulls the forms needed for this case, the process steps inside the case profile, the document checklist, letter templates associated to the case, and much more. If you are happy with the case processes that we already offer, there is no need to customize. However, if you want something more specific to how you operate your cases, this video will show you how to customize in the Admin Tools page. Let us go to the Admin Tools page by clicking on the Settings button on the top right and proceed to click on Administrative Tools. We are now in the Admin Tools page. Let us now click on the Case Processes icon. You will now see listed all the case processes you can choose from when creating a case. If you wish to edit a case process, you will see icons to the right of the case process which consists of forms, steps, documents, questionnaires, letters, and billing items. If selecting forms, it allows you to choose the default forms when selecting this case. You will proceed to add process forms. Search for the form, and once located click on the checkbox and finalize by selecting add. Once added, every time you select this type of case, it will pull the list of forms you just modified. If selecting steps, it will take you to the process steps of a case. You can modify an already existing step by clicking on the edit button or select add process step. You will add the description, the time frame of how long it should take, and lastly check if you want to receive an email when this step has a due date in the case. Finalize by clicking on save. It will now be added to the list. You can then decide to move up on the list or move down by clicking on the up and down arrows. You can also hover over the drag and drop grids to the left, and when clicked, you can drag the process step to the position you'd like. The process steps will now have your exact steps when working on a case. You can also give each step an activity. Activities are automated actions when either starting a step, completing it, or certain days before or after a target date. Activities that the software can do are create a log, create an expense, send an email, or send a questionnaire. When choosing an activity, you will define when you would like for the activity to happen, the activity you want to happen, and lastly, details of that activity, such as an exact comment that will go to logs, an exact email, and so forth. Once saved, the software will now perform the activity when working with the process steps in the case. You can add as many activities as you'd like. The next thing to modify is the document checklist. By clicking documents, you will be brought to a document checklist needed for this type of case. Same as before, you can modify the existing list or add more things to the list by clicking add document. The next thing to modify is questionnaires. When clicking the questionnaire icon, it will bring you to the list of questionnaires that are selected when you pick this case process at the moment of sending questionnaires. You can either delete questionnaires from this list or click Add Questionnaire. It will bring up all the standard questionnaires and custom intake forms you've built. You will select the checkbox to the left and then click on Add. Once doing this, when you go to send questionnaires, there is an option to select the case process. When selecting this specific process, you will have the exact questionnaires you selected here. The next thing to modify is letters. What this does is allow you to associate letter templates you created in the system and associate them to this case. In the description of this video, we've added a link on how to create letter templates, which can be any email you normally send, cover letters, basically any standard email or Word document you typically send to a client for a specific case. The last thing to modify in a case process is billing items. For this option, you must have the optional module billing. We have also included a video on the description showing you how to create billing items in the Admin Tools page. Once you've created billing items, you can go in here, select Add Process Billing Items, and proceed to assign billing items to this case. 
Once you've added these here, when working on this type of case and wanting to select expenses to be invoiced, these expenses will automatically appear rather than a list of all your expenses. Now, what we just saw was how you can modify a case process with your exact settings. There are a couple more things you can do here. The first is you can create a brand new case process. When going this route, it requires you to add a name. You will also have the enabled box checked, meaning it will appear in your caseworker portal. Once created, you will use the tools previously shown on this video to associate things like forms, process steps, and much more. Adding brand new cases will come in handy when wanting to create other type of cases such as divorce, bankruptcy, and so on. You can manage all your cases on this software, not just immigration. Once created, it will appear at the end of the list. The last thing to show you is the settings on the left of the case process. The first thing is an edit button that lets you change the name or disable a case process so it doesn't appear as an option in the caseworker portal. The next button is an insert button, which works similar to the create case process button. However, as opposed to sending it to the end of the list, it will list it right after this one. You can then go and modify the case process as shown before. The next button is a copy button. This will come in handy when you want to create a similar case process and maybe modify one or two things. You will be asked to name the new case and from there proceed to modify the case process. The next button is a delete button. Proceed with caution when deleting. If you do not want to see a case process in the caseworker portal, we recommend disabling the case process instead, as seen before. The next button is up and down arrows to move the position of a case process on the list, which will also modify how it appears in the case wizard. Please note, you also have drag and drop grids to the left, which allows you to reorganize by dragging and dropping a process step. Lastly, the move to button sends a case process similar to how the up and down arrows work but this will allow you to send it to a specific order on your list. Meaning if I click the move to button, enter the number one and click okay, it will move this process step at the beginning of the list. Before we end this video, if for whatever reason you deleted a case process and wish to find something similar and add it back on, you can always go to the system case processes to the right. On this page, you will have default case processes. If you wish to import system processes to your case processes so that it appears when working on a case, click on the copy button. This case will now be imported into the case processes. This concludes our video on case processes.